Good morning, I'm Natalie Bright with the Olathe Chamber of Commerce. This interview is being conducted on behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy, comprised of Chambers of Commerce in Johnson County and the Kansas City Chamber. Jointly, we host the VoteJoco.com, a nonpartisan site where voters can learn more about candidates for public office. Many of the candidates we will be interviewing have completed candidate questionnaires so they can be found also on the VoteJoco.com. We have with us today, Wendy Bredetti, who is a Democratic candidate for Senate District 23. This district is entirely contained in Olathe and on the Eastern edge, it goes to Flum. On the Western edge, it kind of jigs between K7 and Woodland. And then on the South, it goes to 175th Street up to just North of 135th Street. Thank you, Wendy, for joining us today to share with our members and visitors to Vote Joko more about you and what your priorities will be if elected. We want to start today with a conversation, um, which is three or four minutes about yourself and why you chose to run for Senate District 23. So Wendy, feel free to let us know. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, like Natalie said, my name is Wendy Budetti, and I'm running here in state Senate District 23. Um, my husband and I, we've lived in this area for almost 20 years in this specific Senate district. I've grown up in Johnson County. Um, I was a graduate of Shawnee Mission East and later KU. And um, we chose to raise our five kids in this area because we love Olathe. He's Olathe born, I'm an Olathe convert. But um, it's just such a wonderful community of people who are, um, you know, raising their families and doing their jobs here in Olathe and such strong schools and just a great um, sense of community to raise a family. And I got into this race because um, as our children got older, they're now 13 to 22, we found that we had some extra time on our hands. And with that extra time, we chose to really engage in um, local politics. And what we were finding out was um, that uh, it wasn't that easy to get engaged in local politics. There's a lot that goes on in Topeka and it's hard to keep track. Um, but we really devoted the time to the issues that were important to us to find out uh, how our community was being represented in Topeka. Um, that engagement and that uh, discovery of where we stood led us to get in involved with the Johnson County Democratic Party. Um, I became a precinct leader and moved up from there, got a uh, um, into the leadership for this Senate district for the Democratic Party. And what that did was give me the awesome opportunity to work for so many campaigns and to go and knock doors and talk to people in this district. And talking to um, households, a lot of split households in this area, so I wasn't only talking to Democrats. Um, but what I found was people uh, felt disengaged from the political process. They felt like their voice didn't matter or their voice wasn't being heard and that it was, like I said, hard to keep track of what all was going on. Um, and those conversations really uh, sparked my interest in um, running for this seat because I felt like the conversations I was having with people at the door, that, that was information and those were stories that deserved to be heard. And um, I wanted to offer our uh, fellow Senate 23 voters another opportunity to have someone represent them who wanted to have those conversations. Whether we agreed on every issue or not, I wanted to hear what they had to say. And I wanted to make it, um, make the process of understanding how what goes on in Topeka affects our daily lives a lot easier for everyone. Um, so when the opportunity came to run for this seat, uh, I took it. I was a little reluctant. I never planned to go into politics, um, but the, when you know, the chance comes, you, you, you got to take that. My background is more in a variety of, a variety of um, avenues. Like I said, we have five kids from 13 to 22, so a lot of my years were spent uh, taking care of them, making sure that they got where they needed to go, and um, keeping them safe and healthy. I've worked in pretty much every industry from the hospitality industry to the retail environment to the corporate office. Um, I currently substitute teach for the Olathe School District. And uh, so my, my realm of uh, work life experience has kind of been everywhere from side part time jobs to 40 plus hours a week. And um, 
now this campaign is my focus and it's been a great ride and I'm just happy to be here to share uh, more about my platform. Well, we're so glad that you're here today and let's get started with the questions. Um, if you could, they're going to be key business issues. If you could keep your answers to approximately two minutes, that just helps us keep the video within a, a time frame that viewers will watch. Um, and we hope that um, the whole thing won't take more than 30 minutes. So thank you so much for your time. Um, the first question is, what do you see as the top business policy issue facing the state of Kansas in the coming year? Absolutely. So um, I think obviously we're in the midst of a global pandemic here and the ramifications of the COVID-19 crisis, you know, we've only begun to see how they um, are going to affect our state, our state economy and our state businesses. And this is only unfortunately the beginning. And what I think is as a huge priority is um, making sure that our state has the resources that it needs to handle this crisis and that we are following um, the guidelines that will get us back on track as quickly as possible. Um, the budget is obviously going to be very much affected by our lack of uh, revenue due to the crisis and that's going to be a huge issue uh, next year's legislative session and I look forward to finding creative ways to um, increase our revenue by bringing more jobs to our area and um, and making sure that we have alternative ways of uh, bringing in revenue rather than just looking at slashing budgets uh, across the board. Um, for our businesses, you know, we want we want our small businesses to be able to stay open. We need to provide them with the resources and with the guidelines that allow them to do so in a safe, responsible way. Um, how would you propose to balance the state budget? What specific budget cuts would you support and what revenue enhancements would you consider, if any? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my first reaction um, would be to look at ways to increase revenue through job production um, and other ways that uh, our state can bring in revenue that uh, appropriately um, are distributed throughout the community. So I think, um, you know, sales tax on online purchases is a way to increase revenue, sales tax on online streaming devices as well. Um, also looking into, I know there's been bills going through Topeka about sports wagering as a way to bring in money to our state economy. Um, also bringing in, like I said, bringing in those jobs. I'm in support of um, medicinal marijuana being brought to our state that would, um, while that product itself may not be taxable, the influx of jobs and the new industry that it would bring would help uh, grow our state revenue from that. Um, I also uh, think that, you know, there's so many, we're doing, Governor Kelly's done a great job with bringing in, um, you know, increasing our renewable energy jobs. Um, we've seen that uh, there's ways for our state to really take advantage of our place in the country geographically and the resources that we have to build that industry. Um, my knee jerk reaction would not be to just look at where we can slash budgets because I think we've seen the effects of slashing budgets, especially with state agencies. Um, that really has come alive in the past six months and we've seen where our state agencies have been hurt the most from years of not being funded properly so i'm looking more towards grab job production and growth and revenue um revenue sources that are not uh, disproportionately affecting one population in our state um, rather than uh, slashing budgets Another key issue that we're concerned about in the business community is obviously our workforce. Um, and, you know, after going through this COVID crisis, um, what would you do to grow and develop the state's workforce? Yeah, um, you know, I think the state's workforce starts in our schools and it starts in K through 12 education and goes from there. And so making sure that our schools are producing, um, you know, workers that um, 
are able to help our state economy and are trained in multiple ways. Um, you know, when you leave the K through 12 system, um, our students should be equipped to either enter into the workforce, enter into a uh, occupational training program, or enter into post-secondary school. And um, our state needs to really make sure that those K through 12 schools are funded properly to ensure that every student has an opportunity to achieve success. Um, also, I think that, you know, we have a lot of great local partnerships with businesses and schools here in Olathe and just making sure that those um, those partnerships are continued and adapted as the job force changes. I think that's extremely important. Um, you know, we we have such wonderful industry here in Olathe and such an amazing school district. Just really growing those partnerships between the two will help ensure that our students are coming out of school with the necessary skills to succeed. That's a great segue into my next question, and that is, Really, what are your views on K through 12 funding? Yeah, well, you know, K through 12 funding is one of the, uh, you know, only things mandated in our state constitution. So I do see it as a priority. Um, bringing our uh, K through 12 funding back up to adequate level, as was done, is a great first start. But um, our students are our future. Our schools are the gems of our community, and to I think when you put your priority on making sure that our schools are um, not just adequately funded, but appropriately funded, that the money is being put towards the students and the, the teachers that are um, you're working so hard right now in such a crazy environment and making sure that the programs that our schools are uh, developing are appropriate for the workforce. I mean, they talk about it a lot, um, you know, that the jobs that our kindergartners are going to be doing, most of them haven't even been created yet. So how do we make sure that we're funding programs that um, explore new opportunities for students? I mean, K through 12 funding is huge. Um, schools bring workforce to communities. If you have strong schools, you know, people want to come move to a community with strong schools and um, that helps everyone out. It helps um, our businesses out by attracting um, a more, um, you know, effective and workforce. And um, so really without school funding, without public school funding, your community is going to suffer greatly um, by having a lack of strong future workforce and also by uh, the inability to attract uh, talent to this area. So kind of following up on that path, um, economic development and policies are really important um, to businesses. So what would you do to support and encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? Yeah, so um, I think when we're talking, you know, about um, job growth, uh, we have to be creative. We have to look at industries, you know, what has worked in other states, but also let's look at what's unique about Kansas and what can we make work here. Um, I think that we've got uh, such great natural resources here and a great um, area to really kind of start growing some of those green jobs. Um, I think that is a great way to uh, look towards the future. Um, finding ways for our renewable energy source jobs to grow and um, looking at, you know, technology um, expanding broadband is, is huge. Um, and that, you know, we talk about like um, the highway system after World War II and how that was built and really connected our entire country. And um, looking at those broadband highway systems of making sure that, you know, the new highways and the internet and making sure that every part of our state has um, access to that, that helps grow jobs, both in the in construction of making sure that the broadband services have availability, but also that allows for, um, greater you know job growth across the state because if everywhere has the same uh connectivity ability i mean we're seeing right now with so much of our job force being virtual right now um that's going to help make sure that uh everyone has the opportunity to uh 
to participate in our workforce if it does go, you know, more virtual in the future. We've definitely had a lot of virtual these days. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, a perfect example. <laughs> hey, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, what are your views on healthcare policy? Absolutely. So I am 100% for expanding Medicaid here in Kansas. I think healthcare needs to be affordable, um, both for our uh, consumers and also for our businesses that provide it. Um, right now, we are losing out on um, federal funding uh, because of our lack of expanding Medicare and uh, or Med Medicaid. And um, it's important to uh, to our community because we've got, you know, I mean, we're in the midst of a public health crisis and we have over a hundred and I think it's up to like 150,000 Kansans who are caught in that wage gap. And it's, it's not fair to them and it's not economically sensical to uh, refuse federal funding um, and by not expanding Medicaid. Um, we, you know, healthy workforce is a strong workforce. You don't want, you don't want your workers to be sick. They need to have access to affordable health care. And um, I think that's, you know, it, it, it's the basis of any workforce. You don't like people being sick. Um, and it also shouldn't fall, uh, you know, the cost shouldn't be a burden to our businesses. We need to make sure that, um, that they have the opportunity to provide plans that are affordable for them and for their employees so that they take full advantage of the amazing healthcare opportunities we have in our country uh, with all the medicines and technology, just making sure that they're affordable. Well, key to that is, is how does the state pay for those types of things? And so what are your views on state policy, um, state tax policy, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, with state tax policy, I think um, I think what's most important is having um, a level of um, of uh, expectation, like a standard expectation so that there's no surprises because businesses can't plan, you know, for future growth and sustainability if state tax policy is constantly changing and giving, you know, making more of a burden on them. So I do think um, from a state taxing policy, we need to have kind of a standard expectation of how things are going to be for businesses um, and not be constantly changing roads on them and saying, we're going to do this and then we're going to do that. They need to have consistency in that state tax policy. Um, you know, I think uh, that there have been a lot of uh, different different ways to pay for things that have either put the burden too heavily on our small businesses, or in some instances, um, it's eliminated, uh, you know, the burden for certain payers entirely. And I think we need to find a balance that really makes sense because, um, we don't want we don't want our small businesses being overburdened by our state taxes. We also need to look at uh, industries that are uh, based outside of our state that are taking advantage of our state tax policies, and we need to make sure that, uh, like I said, the burden isn't laying on those small local businesses and uh, not touching some of those outside industries that. Uh, reap the benefit of our awesome workers, but uh, don't contribute to the uh, funds in our state. Well, great, Wendy, we're in the home stretch. Last question, and then we'll move into your closing statement. What do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Um, that's a great question. And it's actually, you know, it, it was one of the reasons why I got into this race. And um, I think what distinguishes me most from my opponent is my commitment to transparency and uh, to open communication. Um, I am 100% about being as open and honest as possible and as um, up to date as possible as to what's going on once I'm in Topeka. I want to make sure that my constituents know um, both what issues are being heard, what how I feel about them, and how they can get involved. I think that is uh, empowering our community is extremely important in the political arena. Um, and, you know, I want my constituents to know that I'm working for their interests, not my own. 
and um, that I'm willing to sit down and have conversations and truly listen to people who I may not agree with on everything, but there's always some place that we can find a, a middle point and a point of agreement in um, at pretty much every issue, there's a place that we can start from. So having those conversations with my constituents that um, and making sure they know what's going on and not keeping things uh, behind uh, closed doors. That's my biggest commitment. And I think that's what sets me apart the most from my opponent. Well, thank you so much for your time and taking those questions and answering them. Um, real quick, if you would take um, some time to do a closing statement, three to four minutes. Um, it'd be great for our viewers to kind of have a summary of what you've talked about today. Absolutely. And thanks again for this opportunity. It's been so hard to not be out in the public and um, getting to go to great, you know, meetings and um, meeting people face to face all over the community and specifically here in Senate 23. So these online forums are just such a, a great way to get our message out in these uh, trying times. Um, you know, my campaign is all about empowering the people of this district and making sure that their priorities are the priorities of our state senator. And um, I believe that I uphold those. Um, I am for funding our public schools. I am for expanding Medicaid. And I am for making sure that we do have a balanced budget, even amidst this crisis. Um, I have been a huge supporter of Governor Kelly's policies to help keep our state safe while also allowing our businesses to go about their business of, um, you know, offering services to our community and making sure that, um, you know, we all are getting out there and, uh, you know, being as safe as possible in this time of crisis. Um, I'm really excited um, from the conversations I've had with voters, uh, whether on the phone or over uh, the internet, um, about how uh, engaged our uh, voting populace is right now because there is so much going on in this world and specifically here in the community from our schools to our hospitals and everything in between and i am just excited to have this platform of my campaign uh, to really highlight some of those uh, voices and to talk about how we can keep building our building kansas back stronger we were on a great path before this crisis started and i believe we can get back on that path with the right leadership uh, leadership that follows science leadership that knows the needs of the community and that is working for them and I believe I am that candidate. And I look forward to serving Senate 23 in the State Senate. And I appreciate your time today. Well, Wendy, on behalf of the Olathe Chamber of Commerce and the entire Johnson County Public Policy, thank you for participating in today's interview and providing voters with an important opportunity to get to hear from you. This interview has been recorded and will be posted on the Public Policy Council's nonpartisan voter website at votejoco.com where you can find more information about candidates, videos, and other candidate information, as well as advanced voting details. So before I close, I do want to remind voters that advanced voting will begin on Wednesday, October 14th. Advanced voting in person begins Saturday, October 17th. And the, and the general election day will be November 3rd, and polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. So again, thank you for joining us today. I hope you have a great day, and good luck with your campaign. Thank you.